right. I'm excited. Well, I got to show you one thing that's in my toolbox that everybody needs to be aware of is City Central. I'm here at City Central today. Uh, my beautiful penthouse suite, as you can see. Uh, actually, no, <laughs> I'm down in Fort Worth. Um, but for real, City Central, if you're looking for um, a good co-working space or shared office space, City Central has been amazing. Uh, they've got five locations across the Metroplex. And I uh, just wanted to give them a shout out. You're talking about tools in the toolbox. If you're looking for a place to work, I don't know about you other, who, who are the parents that are here? I'll, I wanna see a comment, how many kids you have? Because if you're a parent with kids, you know, man, that whole work from home thing was good for a little bit, but after a while, you need to get out. <laughs> so City Central was my place to kind of come and, and have focused time to actually get some work done, um, if you know what I'm saying. So anyways, um, awesome, love City Central, love the legends. Malcolm, it's a great honor. Um, one fur, furry baby, that's funny, Kelsey. Um, yeah, man, it, I'm super excited to be, uh, be able to speak to you guys today. The legends have become like family to me. Um, I moved here to the Metroplex about five years ago, and um, it took me a few years to, to find the legends, but when I did, um, uh, man, just latched on. Uh, this community, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people will, will uh, echo my sentiment that um, it's, a, it's a special community, and uh, I love just being a part of it. So yeah, very anxious to get back to in person. Um, so we actually can see faces and shake hands uh, and give some hugs. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. But uh, I've, got, I've got a stacked presentation for you today. So as Malcolm mentioned, um, it's true. He's only, the legends have experienced like one tool from my toolbox. And I've got a lot of other tools. Um, but I, uh, and what I've been doing for them is a lot of LinkedIn marketing. Um, but what I really thought would be helpful today, um, since I've been working with so many business owners and um, sales and marketing teams is I wanted to take a step back and um, kind of talk about um, just just a, a, a continuous, I guess, challenge that a lot of us business owners face. Um, and so I've got a presentation. I'm going to share my screen. And uh, some of you will be excited about this topic. Maybe some of you won't. Um, I'm hoping through this that it'll be entertaining and educational. Um, that'll be edutainment, I guess you could say. Um, so regardless of what you think of the Kardashians, um, I know all, all the men are probably like, oh man, my wife, she watches that show all the time. Um, I understand your pain, brother. But um, regardless of what you think of the Kardashians, there is one thing that they have nailed, and it is branding to drive customers and grow their business. So we're gonna take a, a lesson today from their playbook and talk about what you can learn from the Kardashians and how to leverage celebrity branding to drive more customers, clients, or patients to your local business. Um, so uh, just by way of introduction, again, as Malcolm said, my name is Matt. Um, so I'm, I'm the founder of Endure Marketing, and um, we uh, do some pretty exciting things on the digital front. But for those of you that are, that are listening, just wondering if this is for you, uh, it's for, you know, for local business owners who want to attract more customers, clients, or patients, specifically for the products or services that um, that make them most money for the least effort and give them the most fulfillment. How many of you can relate to that statement? Um, you know, the most money for the least effort and give them the most fulfillment. So many times for us in business, we kind of get stuck uh, doing the things that give us the least fulfillment and pay us the least amount of money. And that's a horrible kind of rut to fall in. And we want you to break out of that today. So we're going to talk about um, about this topic, how you can attract more customers, clients, or patients in the next 90 days without changing a single thing in your business. Here's my promise to you. By the end of this presentation, you'll see how you can, how you can attract more customers and clients. Um, but before I go any further, I wanted to reassure you guys, I'm, I'm sure you've had a lot of marketers uh, come into your life and in and out of your business. Um, and uh, it, it's nice for seeing the shift in marketing where it's, it's a, there's a heavy push towards results. Um, and I hear that on a consistent basis from business owners. Yeah, I'm going to spend all this money and do all this marketing activity, but how is that going to translate to actual results? How is that going to affect my bottom line? Um, so, but having said that, I do not work with companies that expect overnight results. And I'm sure many of you would say the same thing. Uh, results don't happen overnight, but uh, if you're doing the right system over the right period of time, you're doing the right actions, they'll lead to the right results if you stay consistent. So, Again, this is me, a cool picture of uh, me getting ready to punch the camera person out, uh, <laughs> having a little fun at work, uh, but I help businesses get more customers, clients, and patients using innovative and memorable growth hacking tactics. So that's a cool term that has become somewhat of a buzzword in marketing, growth hacking. And essentially, it's just uh, guys like me 
Um, we're non-traditional to say the least. We look for uh, innovative trends or technology and data and find ways to kind of marry it all together. Um, so, but what you're gonna hear today is how you can grow your brand um, and get better visibility without endless blogging, without a huge social media following, which defines most of us, uh, without your own TV show, uh, without posing in a bathing suit and getting on the cover of celebrity magazines, um, and without feeling like a hamster on a hamster wheel. Okay, does that sound pretty good? Excellent. So let me introduce you to my team. Um, and I always love talking about, people ask me, oh, sorry, you know, is everybody here local? Do you have an office? Uh, no, actually, um, like my COO is in Serbia. He's an American living in Serbia. His wife is Serbian, their bottom left corner. Uh, Joram lives in Kenya. He was actually an orphan. And now is, he's been with me the longest out of any of my employees. Uh, Mahmoud is in Egypt. Reed and Greg are both in Florida. Richard's in Utah. Uh, Gary's up in Canada. We've got a really diverse team um, with a lot of different specialties. So uh, I'm grateful to work with such cool people. So here's what we're going to cover. It says 45 minutes. Uh, actually, on my notes it does. But we're going to do 20, uh, hopefully 25. So we'll see. But we're going to pull back the curtain on... Number one, the Kardashian secret to leveraging big brands to boost your exposure and get more sales online. Second, I'm gonna show you how to go small to win big. And I can't tell you how important that principle really is in marketing. Um, how we bring clients uh, more customers for the exact products and services they want to sell more of, really important. Then the last, uh, I'm gonna walk you through how to create your action plan to get 10 new customers, clients, or patients in the next 90 days and dominate your local area Kardashian style, all right? So that's kind of the agenda. Uh, again, disclaimer, nothing for sale. Um, I don't even have a buy now button, um, like maybe some other marketers would, but I do have a cool gift. Uh, you've probably heard that before too, but seriously, uh, stick, stick through to the end. I've got um, uh, a link to a free report that you're gonna be able to generate to kind of give you some visibility about your brand. And uh, let's keep going. So uh, first, let me ask you a couple questions. Does this sound like you? Do you have some months where cash pours into the business, but you just can't seem to maintain it? Um, do you start out every month wondering where the customers and sales are gonna come from? Um, or do you secretly know your work is, is worth more than you're charging, but you're afraid if you raise your prices, no one's gonna pay? Uh, I, I can relate to that. Uh, are you working too hard in your business? Um, too many hours burning yourself out with very little to show for it all. Does it frustrate you to see your competition make the kind of income you want to make? even though you know deep down that you're better than them at what you do. I hear that a lot too. Do you feel confused or overwhelmed by marketing and technology? If I asked you to raise your hand, there'd be a lot of people that would raise their hands, I'm sure. Well, what would it mean for you and your business if you had someone in your corner who had your back and that you knew you could trust who could just take care of all that stuff for you? Wouldn't that be nice? You know, um, if you answered yes to any of these questions and I have good news, None of these things is the real problem. The real problem is that you haven't made what I call the shifts, okay? So earlier this year, Lead Pages, which is a pretty popular tech platform for building like landing pages and stuff like that, they surveyed over 1,300 small business owners and asked them, which marketing challenge do you, want to, uh, do you most want to overcome right now? And the number one answer was how to turn leads into clients. So I know for most business, well, every business owner, the challenge is twofold. It's how do I find qualified leads and then how do I convert those leads into customers or clients? That's, that's the common struggle. Um, and really what it all comes down to is this, and they may sound like you know, kind of ambiguous, uh, ambiguous uh, words, but visibility and trust. Okay, that's what it really all comes down to. So the one thing you need to know right now is this. There are three simple shifts you need to make to boost your online visibility and dominate your local area while working less. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to make those shifts today, okay? And if you do have any questions, I need to be monitoring the, uh, the chat here. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, right there, um, over in chat. If you have any questions, just drop them there. There we go, I can keep the chat open uh, right up here in the top corner. And if you have any questions, just drop it in there um, and I'll be happy to answer those kind of at the end. Uh, yeah, great. So. Yeah, once you make these shifts, you'll expand your reach and attract your ideal customers so you can increase your profits while growing your business. You'll generate customers on demand by using marketing that establishes you as the go-to expert. Uh, better, than, better, better than ever, uh, better yet, you'll, you'll never have to go searching for new business or waste time chasing down unqualified leads. 
I can't tell you how many people I've spoken to again who have done that. They spent all their time on phone calls getting nowhere with people who really weren't prospects to begin with, but they took the call because that's all the leads they have coming in. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so let's move on. Shift number one, uh, let's go here, is the Kardashian secret to leveraging big brands to boost your exposure and generate more sales online. Okay, here's what it comes down to. It's good coffee. Brand visibility. So marketing experts and SEO companies are saying marketing has changed. Uh, they tell you that you need to be doing all this complicated stuff you don't understand, like you know, writing all these blog posts that are SEO rich, posting on social media, building backlinks, making structural changes to your website. But the fact is, while the tools we use to communicate have indeed changed and they're changing at a daily rapid rate, uh, the, the same principles of human persuasion have never changed. They've been the same for thousands of years. And the same formula that works then also works now. It all comes down to brand visibility. So whether you run a small mom and pop shop, and I know there's some of you in the Legends family, uh, or you have a multi-million dollar corporation, or you're aspiring to have a multi-million dollar corporation. Uh, it, regardless, the business that wins is the one, and I'm reading the comments, uh, it's hard to do both. The business that wins is the one with the strongest brand, the most visibility in that area. It, I think we all understand this. You say Coca-Cola, and immediately for some of you, like, I got to grab a Coke um, or McDonald's, right? That, that authority, that trust, that brand, that is so iconic. Well, they all had to start somewhere. But the course that they set themselves on was one that led them to their final destination, which is essentially market domination. And who's to say that you can't get there too? It's just, you gotta have a plan. So let's say you're a, you're a dentist, for instance, and someone in your local area needs a root canal treatment. How many people are going, are, are, are going to recommend you? Uh, and more to the point, if more people were to become aware of you, what kind of impact would that have on your business? Right, if they knew who you were, they knew that that was the specific pain that you solved in the industry. You were the root canal expert. Um, anybody have a root canal and feeling some pain right now? <laughs> I've not had one yet. Probably not. I hope I don't. But let's examine the effect it's had on one brand, right? The machine that is Kim Kardashian on the screen in front of you. If you know nothing else about Kim, she's very, very famous. And everybody says the Kardashians are famous for being famous. Uh, but they did something right. Um, that is actually not Cher. That is Kim. Uh, as of September 2020, she had over 188 million Instagram followers, about 67 million more than Nike, one person, million more than Nike, and 41 million more than my boy, Justin Bieber. Uh, he's from Canada and so am I, so I like the Biebs. Um, you can't walk through a supermarket without glimpsing at, at her on all the magazines and the tabloids and people commenting about her parenting style and relationships and everything else. Uh, there's a lot we can talk about the topic of Kim, but, and I'm sure you probably have your own opinion about it, but regardless of what people say, the fact is we can learn a lot from a marketing perspective about her success. She is a brand machine. As soon as her name is mentioned, we've already created an image in our mind of her and everything she represents. It's no coincidence her ubiquitous online presence has led to creating a powerful brand and quite an empire uh, because we just can't forget about her. She's everywhere. The key takeaway, regardless of how skilled you are, it means nothing if you're not visible and no one knows who you are. I think we would all agree to that. Strong brands are memorable and being widely visible is a huge part of that. You can, you can be the best in your industry, but if you don't get in front of the right audience, you're missing out on a ton of opportunities in your business. Does that mean you have to hop into a swimsuit and pose for the cover of celebrity magazines? How many of you like to see Malcolm do that? <laughs> Comment yes. <laughs> um, no, of course not. I wouldn't even want to do that. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, so in his book, The Kardashian Principle, celebrity expert uh, Jitender Sadiq, I probably butched his name, uh, botched his name, but he said, her stunning popularity represents a seismic shift in the way ideas catch on and how people, products, and services can capitalize on this change to build stronger, more intimate connections with consumers, okay? And what Kim did uh, with her own brand, her half-sister, Kylie, uh, also did for Full Lips and uh, Cosmetics. Many, some of you know this, maybe some of you don't, but she became the world's youngest ever self-made billionaire. I have my own opinions about that term. I don't think anybody's self-made, but to illustrate the point, I think you know what I'm saying. She's only 22, I think 23 now, and absolutely crushing it. Her brand launched two, uh, a couple of years ago, has already sold us uh, more than $630 million worth of makeup. 
the world's youngest ever millionaire. All right. So whether you like her or not, maybe there's something we can learn from this, right? These two dominate branding. And just like Kylie on the cover of Forbes, can you imagine what getting your business advertised on USA Today and other big brand sites online would do for your business? Now you might be thinking, this is out of reach for me. I can't afford that. But the fact is every small business can have this kind of presence. And I'm not talking about the front, about front page media necessarily by simply advertising and being present on these sites. The effect is the same psychologically. So how did the Kardashians become so popular? I mean, there's lots of out there, you know, families and not all of them get insanely world famous. Maybe you're thinking my family is crazy and I'm not famous. Well, maybe you just have the wrong marketing strategy. <laughs> and more importantly, how can that get you more customers? Because that's what it's all about, growing your business, serving your audience, and, uh, and, and growing. Uh, so how does this relate to your business? What's the fuel here? All right, the answer is simple. The most successful brands in the world are omnipresent. What do I mean by omnipresent? Some of you know what this term means. According to Google, it means to be everywhere. Kind of like oxygen. Is it possible to be everywhere at the same time? Not for us mortals. Uh, maybe a demigod. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But for a brand, it's very possible for brands to be everywhere. And every single business should be directing marketing efforts toward it. Kylie Jenner, for example, gets a ton of media coverage, and that's why it feels like you can never escape them. They're all over the place. No matter where you turn, they're there. They get themselves on big brand sites to reach their audience. And it's possible for you to do the same thing on a small scale without expensive PR companies. Guys, the game has changed. <laughs> You now have so much at your disposal. You just got to understand how to use it, right? We both do. Uh, so think about it. Your customers are being bombarded with hundreds of advertising messages every single day. Everyone is putting out more and more content and making a lot of noise. Have you heard the term? Content is king, all right? It's like a game of who can put out the most content. Uh, that's a really exhausting game to play. So this is making it harder to stand out online and get people to buy into you and your business. That is why you must aim to be omnipresent everywhere. The more messages and mediums you control, the more power and reach your marketing will have. All right, online entrepreneur, Pat Flynn, he's great, also a Canadian. Um, you should check out and follow Pat Flynn. He's got a great podcast, creates a lot of great content. Um, he kind of pioneered the uh, online course movement, uh, membership community stuff, and uh, he's great. So he said, if you wanna become successful online, you must think about what you do as building a brand. In order to build a brand, you must do what you can to be everywhere. Your website or Facebook page is only the beginning. Um, and it's cute. I have clients that come to me like, I got a Facebook page. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I've got a million dollar brand. Well, <laughs> you're, you're on your way. <laughs> but it takes more than that. That's just the start. It's your hub where people can go to find out more about who you are and what you do. But it's also just one piece of the giant puzzle that is your brand, one piece. So the question now becomes, how can a small business get big brand visibility without a big marketing budget? And that is the conversation I have all the time. How do you get customers and market your local business online? Well, there's the old way, uh, which is probably the way that you've been taught. Uh, the old way of doing things is, if you wanna get more customers, you need a Facebook page. Uh, you need to be on Instagram. You've gotta be posting your pictures and posting your videos and commenting on other people's posts. And, if you want to get more customers, you've got to have a great Twitter feed and be tweeting two, three, four, five, six, seven times a day. Uh, you need to have a YouTube channel where you're posting videos every single week. Oh, and you need to have a great blog that's engaging and gives relevant content and ranks for all kinds of keywords. You've got to be producing quality, long-form content for your audience on a regular basis. And if you want to get traffic to your blog, you need SEO, right? Which means you need to go and build some backlinks. So do all this stuff and maybe eventually by some random act of God, you'll get more customers. Tell me, does this make any sense to you whatsoever? <laughs> no. Uh, and how many of you have been on that hamster wheel where you've just been on this crazy all over the place trying to keep up uh, with everything and everyone? Um, how many of you guys have been taught one or more of these strategies, right? This is what I call the hamster wheel because that's really what it is. It's not scalable or sustainable. Trying to do all these things is a recipe for burnout. Uh, plus as a small, yep, guilty. I see some guilties in the chat. Uh, as a small business owner, you probably find it extremely difficult to create content, not to mention the fact that you're running a business. Let's forget, not forget about that. You know, how many, if I had a dime for every time I talked to a business owner and they said, I don't have time for marketing. I'm trying to run my business. I'm like, exactly. I get it. That's why I'm here to help you. So if that's the old way, 
and we know the old way is stupid, uh, then what's the new way? All right, the new way is really simple. You don't need a blog. You don't need a huge social media following. You don't need tons of content. This process can replace all of these things. I want you to imagine that you had the ability to immediately leverage hundreds of major brands, all right, that already have the audience and the platform and the traffic. This includes some huge sites like ABC, CBS, Fox News, NBC, YouTube, and over 300 more. This ensures that people searching for the products and services you offer are very likely to see you. And it's extremely powerful because if your customers miss an important bit of content in one format, they're likely to see it in a different format in a different location. So you get on multiple platforms in multiple formats and leverage their pre-existing authority, which has built in trust, uh, and their audiences. Remember, authority is key to getting the traffic you need. Um, and just like a megaphone can amplify your voice with no additional effort, this process that I'm showing you amplifies your authority so you can increase your visibility online and drive more traffic to your local business website. So which strategy do you prefer? You wanna do the old way? <laughs> it should go without saying that the new way would be a lot easier to implement. So to this point, you may be wondering how to leverage uh, these brands, how these brands are actually uh, leveraged. So the graphic offers some insight into how this process works. And you can see right over there, all right? Uh, basically, when Google sees that a business is being covered by authority sites, it starts to pay more attention, all right? Remember, um, and one, way, one easy way to kind of think of this is building a relationship with Google, okay? Remember, Google tracks everything. Um, if I ask you to raise your hand if you have an Android, I, I would be guilty. There's a, a lot of iPhone users out there, but statistics say that 80% of people uh, have an Android. Um, and Android is Google OS. So Google tracks everything. And the, as more people start visiting your site and they make more phone calls, they start walking into locations, they leave more positive reviews, and then they mention your brand more often. As more and more people start searching for your business online, Google sees this and rewards you with more authority and the cycle repeats. Uh, it's like word of mouth marketing on steroids. So to further illustrate this strategy, I want you to think about the media coverage of COVID. This is not a political, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking anything political here, but when in history have we ever seen so much media coverage of any kind of a, a, of a breakout or an illness or a sickness? Never. We've never seen this kind of coverage of, of a sickness before. So what does that make you feel? This is my point, right? That omnipresent feel, it's like it's everywhere. Everywhere you look, you feel smothered by it all the time. So imagine if your name and face uh, had that kind of exposure on a local level, not a national level, but a local level in the markets that you want to dominate and be known for. That's what we're going for here. So what's the effect of this uh, Kardashian style brand visibility? Uh, how does being more visible actually help to shift the needle in your business? Well, I want to introduce you to a client of mine and uh, a good guy, Billy. Uh, so Billy is the owner of Billy Go right here in DFW, uh, plumbing and HVAC company powered by a disruptive piece of technology that allows their customers to schedule an appointment and have someone show up within an hour. So if your AC or plumbing goes out, go to billygo.com. You can get somebody there like that. Um, so when he first came to us, he had a, a jumbled marketing team with a disjointed strategy and the best parts of his business were relatively unknown. So he brought my team in, uh, we onboarded and fired every other marketing <laughs> company that he was working with. Uh, and we got aligned on how he's different, what his, uh, we could call it USP or UVP, his unique selling proposition or value proposition, and have placed that at the forefront of all of our marketing efforts. So we then went to work uh, building a brand of trust and authority by giving Google what it wants. Proof that Billy Go is the expert at solving a unique pain point in his industry. He's good, reliable, knowledgeable help, fast. That is Billy's uh, UVP. As a direct result of this exposure um, and visibility across multiple channels, the Billy Go brand has taken over strategic areas uh, in the DFW market as the most obvious solution for HVAC and plumbing solutions. If there are any HVAC and plumbing companies right here and you're, you know, you're like, oh crap, <laughs> I didn't even know what that this guy was taking over my market. Yeah, watch out, he's coming for you. Uh, now you know the guy behind it. Uh, I'm just kidding, uh, partly. Uh, within four short months, Billy was ranking in the money pack, as we would say on Google, for lots of different services that he offered. More importantly, the increase in traffic, um, as you can see on the slide, it's been like three to five X uh, across the, uh, the board of his online presence. It was really cool to see uh, the growth that he's experiencing online. So the question is, how exactly did he get those results? The, ampl the answer is pretty simple. Uh, we helped Billy leverage big brand sites to promote 
specific high value services. And then after several months of doing this, um, we saw success and we're seeing success and we're on the growth curve. Isn't that where you wanna be on the growth curve? I know I do. So um, here, here's why this is good for you. Just like Billy, um, you can put your business in front of potential customers in your local area who are searching for the products or services you offer. Uh, by leveraging big brand sites and industry leading publications to reach new audiences in the most influential way possible. And you can tap into the power of brand visibility uh, to attract an influx of new customers, patients, and clients with built in trust. Um, and I can't express how important that is, right? Uh, we talk about this all the time in networking meetings, right? You go to a networking meeting and they say, people do business with those who they know, like, and trust. Well, it's no different online. We've got we've to replicate that formula. And what I'm showing you is a way to do that uh, the fast way, all right? You can either build trust yourself or you can leverage somebody else's trust and get instant trust if you play your cards right. So if you're anything like most people, you're probably thinking, so how do I get this kind of media coverage for my business without paying exorbitant fees to like a marketing or a PR firm? Don't worry, there's no need for you to put on a bathing suit to cover yourself in baby oil and jump on the cover of a, uh, a celebrity magazine like Kim Kardashian, okay? <laughs> uh, you'll be glad to know we're just placing simple, simple ads on big name sites, okay? Uh, and this brings us to secret number two, and really important. And I might have to end with this point and speed across, uh, skip my third point because I'm, I'm using up a lot of time and I wanna be respectful. How's your lunch, by the way? Is everybody having lunch? I hope it's good. I'm enjoying my coffee. I actually got, um, what is it, like a, oh, like a poke bowl. Y'all ever tried like a Hawaiian poke bowl? It's got like a raw fish and uh, do point number three says, okay, raw fish. Uh, and I got zucchini noodles in this time, so no carbs. Are you doing the keto thing? I've been doing keto for like two years. Where are the keto people at? <laughs> Kelsey's got a Red Bull. <laughs> awesome. It's a Wednesday. <laughs> Need that Red Bull. Coffee. All right, so in secret number two, I'm gonna show you how we get our clients more customers for the exact products and services they want to sell more of and how you can do the same. Because here's the thing, guys. Getting more visibility and attention is only half the battle, right? Um, getting an audience, um, turning that attention into action is the hard part. And this is where most people go wrong. Most advertising, I get so excited and passionate about this point number two. Okay, most advertising fails because it doesn't speak to a specific problem the audience cares about. And here's what I mean. Most local business websites list the various products and services they offer, but provide little to no detail about each of those services. Or, and I've done hundreds of website builds, or you get, you know, you have a, a, a business website that's bloated brochureware, and there's like hundreds of sub pages, and it's completely overwhelming. And your customers have to go digging through all of these pages and sub pages to find what they're looking for. That doesn't work. You're not speaking to their pain point. All right. So um, this is a mistake because people want to know if the dentist or plumber they're actually about to hire knows what they're doing. They want to know you're an expert in the thing they're looking to buy. They don't care about how much you know. They just want to know that you know uh, what they want you to know. And that's that you have the knowledge and experience to solve their exact problem. That's what it is. And with this can't be more important uh, now because of the huge amount of activity, more than ever, more than ever, we're in, the, in the, the historic period where there's more people online than ever before because we've been confined to our houses. <laughs> so everybody's online. Um, if you've ever spent any money on advertising and it didn't work, this is probably why. You must position yourself as uh, a specialist rather than a generalist. When you do this, you're no longer competing with everybody else because people can see that you're an expert in addressing their specific needs. You stand out as their best choice. It's the, you become the logical solution to their problem. Advertising specific services positions you as a specialist rather than a general, generalist. And this is important for you because as you'll come to discover, specialists get paid more money than generalists do, don't they? <laughs> Let's say you're a dentist, for example, and you want more teeth whitening patients. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you need to stop offering all the other products and services you, you offer and only sell teeth whitening services. What I'm saying is you need to do A, make it clear that you offer teeth whitening as a service, and B, public strategic content that demonstrates your expertise in that area. You are the expert at teeth whitening. You turn people's teeth from black 
to sparkling pearl white, baby. You turn people's teeth that are falling out and rotted and you make them look super shiny and awesome. With before and after pictures, anybody will be, man, you show that to somebody who's looking for a teeth whitening solution. Well, if you can do that to that guy's teeth, I'm pretty sure he can help me, right? You look like the expert, they're gonna make the most logical decision. By showing you have the knowledge to solve specific problems and offering products or services that do exactly that, you position yourself and your business as the only logical choice in your marketplace. Generalist and specialist, yes. Focus on that. Be thinking right now in your business, in what areas am I marketing myself as a specialist? If you can't think of one, this is great homework for you. And if you're, you're a generalist at everything, you appeal to nobody. By appealing, what is it? By, by I don't even know the quote. There's some quote out there about like, if you, you appeal to everybody, you appeal to nobody, right? If you stand for everything, you stand for nothing. Uh, we love those, uh, uh, those kind of uh, terminologies, right? Like those quotes. Um, but anyway, so let's look at the example. Imagine um, you've injured your wrist playing golf, okay? You come across two options, two experts who both say they can help you. One is a general physiotherapist who helps anyone affected by an injury, illness, or disability. The other is a golf injury specialist uh, who talks specifically about their expertise with golfers. In this situation, which of the two is the, is the surest investment? Even if the specialist is more expensive, they're the one you're going to choose, right? Why? Because their message is more specific to your problem. It speaks directly to what you're experiencing and the solution you are looking for. So not only do you feel like this person understands your problem and can empathize with you, but you naturally feel as though they have the solution to your problem as well. You're going to go and book an appointment with that guy. So the secret to marketing your local business is to focus on advertising specific services that bring in the exact type of customer you want. This is the beauty of local marketing because you can literally be the expert in an area of speciality and there could be some guy over in the next town, but people in your local market are gonna drive to you because they're closer, you may have mutual relationships, so competition becomes irrelevant when you specialize. So. Uh, in other words, you must get specific on who they are and what they're looking for. Think about it. If someone needs a root canal treatment, they're probably not going to call you up and say, uh, hey, are you a dentist? <laughs> More than likely, they're going to call you up and say something along the lines of, hello, do you offer root canal treatment? Right? If you're a pool installer, people might call you up and say, do you do chlorine-free pool installations or saltwater pools? Right? Looking for a specialist. If you own a kitchen remodeling company, people might call you up and say, do you offer bespoke handmade kitchens? I don't know, is that what people would say? <laughs> you uh, kitchen remodelers, remodelers in here? Uh, all right, you get the point, right? I'm not gonna beat the dead horse, but I'm gonna have a drink of water. So that covers my introduction. No, I'm just kidding. So that's why it's important to go small to win big. As a small business owner, you don't wanna become, you don't wanna be competing with large corporations that have unlimited marketing budgets, obviously. While there's a chance you can outrank them, more than likely you'll just end up wasting your time and money. So instead of trying to compete with big companies for general, uh, general needs and highly competitive ones, you want to drill down and become the big fish in a small pond, right? As illustrated by this beautiful graph over there. Um, this will often mean shifting the focus of your advertising message from more general to more specific products or services. Uh, products or services. And uh, I think you get it. So I'm going to skip over the rest of that. Oh, I will say. Uh, best of all, these more specific needs will be much easier to rank for, which mean that you can start ranking much faster. Okay. Uh, and we're not just talking about SEO stuff here. Okay. Uh, I don't want you to walk away and say, Matt's an SEO expert. That's not the point. I'm trying to help you get brand visibility and trust. So with that in mind, I want to ask you a question. How many different products and services does your business offer? List them all out. Like how many? Uh, but here's the thing I need you to, to think about now. Um, this is more than just listing the services you offer. It's about ensuring people who are looking to solve a specific problem uh, can see that you are an expert in solving that problem. Ensuring that if you offer cosmetic dentistry or custom kitchen remodeling, whatever, that the people you're looking, that are looking for you can see that you sell it and that you are knowledgeable on the topic and the best choice in the area. You can achieve this, again, simply by placing ads about the specific service on big brand sites. Why is that important? Because that has built in trust and credibility and authority, right? So that's how you tie the two together. So uh, example of a dentist. Uh, this, is, this is kind of interesting. I want to talk about this um, because I, I, I mentioned it briefly at the beginning. 
you know, if you're, if you're spending all of your time, uh, you know, trying to grow your business, selling, you know, it, say it's unfulfilling and it's not really, you're, you're spending all of your time in services that aren't really your most profitable. I would put that also in there with your products and services. Which ones do you enjoy doing the most? Which ones are the most profitable? And then do some research and find out how does that relate to what people are looking for in my market, in my area. And I'm going to tell you how you can do that in just a second. So, you know, for, uh, for a dentist, uh, you know, they've got dozens of products and services. Uh, they range from $100 to $5,000, I guess, for Invisalign braces, um, unless you go to smile.com, which I tried and it didn't work because I still have my wisdom teeth in and there was no place for my teeth to go. So I ended up giving them back, but I digress. Uh, so with that in mind, let me ask you this. If you were a dentist, would you rather get more of the $100 patients or more of the $5,000 patients? Right. You'd want to do more of the $5,000 patients. So let's go to the next one, which is the next question. Which of your products and services generates the most profit? And more importantly, how visible is your business online for those high value products or services? Remember, 76% of people who conduct a local search on their smartphone, they visit a business within 24 hours. Mm. Uh, and 28% of those searches result in a purchase. Okay, so those are some good numbers to know. 76% and then 28% end up purchasing. If your brand's advertising isn't all over the internet and on every social media platform, the fact is you are losing business to your competitors. And to help you see exactly how your online visibility stacks up against your competitors, uh, this is something that I like to give to, to some of my clients. It's a snapshot report that shows insights into businesses' visibility for products and services based on location. Okay, this allows us to quickly identify areas where you're currently losing business to your competitors, as well as opportunities for growth. It's really cool. Um, so our goal is basically to turn the report from red to green, um, taking you from being barely visible to uh, barely visible at all to extremely visible, and ultimately ensuring that your business has a five-star rating for each of the products and services that you offer across all the locations that you serve. All right, got a question here. Let me see. It's tough when other writer, others write articles about you that's outdated. How do you combat that? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, have you considered reaching out to them and asking if you could provide an updated article on maybe some changes that have happened in your business since then? Um, this is a common tactic for those that, uh, you know, that find like dead links and stuff like that on, on websites. Say, hey, I've got this piece of content that uh, I see you got a dead link. I've got this. It's relevant. Would you mind replacing it, uh, swapping it out with mine? Um, so yeah, I would just, I would frankly just reach out and and ask them if they wouldn't mind uh, that you could provide them with an update. Um, so to that end, uh, we provide our clients with an updated report every month so they can see their visibility improving in real time. All right, so consistency is key. And I'm gonna step on my, uh, on my soapbox here. Um, if you stop feeding the cycle, it starts to reverse. Uh, in advertising, consistency is key. Okay. In a recent blog post by, by Tawny uh, entitled The Psychological Reason Why Brand Consistency is So Important, she says this, in order to understand why it works that way, we need to step back and take a look at how the human brain remembers things. Okay. First, a pop quiz. All right. Have you ever lost your car keys and had to retrace your steps to find them? Yes. Or walked into a room to get something and instantly forgot why? Yes or picked up your phone to, to do something and then got distracted and forgot why you picked up your phone in the first place. Yes, um, we're not losing our marbles, people. This happens because we tend to forget things when we're removed from the original context. It's called context-dependent memory. Interesting, right? You're gonna learn something psychological today. There you go, go home and tell your husband or wife and just say, hey, listen, uh, uh, I think you struggle with context-dependent memory. That may be a nice way to, you know, approach the conversation if you're having some memory loss issues at home. <laughs> you didn't hear that from me. Um, so if you want to become recognized and remembered in order to earn your customer's trust, you must show up in a way that's consistent so you can be put back into context. Okay. In other words, consistency helps you avoid the, why did I walk into this room question uh, or equivalent of your marketing messages, um, which might be something like, who is this again? And why are they in my Facebook newsfeed? right? Or who is this, what is this Instagram ad doing on, on my timeline or whatever? And, and short, this shortcuts the, the, the process of building brand recognition and trust. So now she goes on to say, awareness is a process. It might take them seeing you in their field of vision 15 times before they're really super awesomely aware. All right. Brand visibility and trust. So, but if you're like most people, you're probably thinking, I don't have the time to learn marketing, right? How do I get on these big sites in the first place? And how do I maintain that kind of consistent presence online? 
what do I need to do? That's a great question. And Malcolm told me to go to number three, so here we are. And we're almost done, hooray. <laughs> number three, I'm gonna reveal how to create your action plan to attract more customers, clients, or patients and dominate your local area Kardashian style. All right, um, I know some of you are still chuckling that I'm using the Kardashians as my main illustrative point here in the presentation, but five minutes left, all right. So the uh, first, list all the products and services your business offers and all the locations it serves, okay? Write that down. Second, look at how visible your business is online for those products and services and how much competition there is. You can use a service like semrush.com uh, or you can use ahrefs, A-H-R-E-F-S.com or you can even check Google Trends uh, to see what current demand looks like for specific products and services. Google Trends is my favorite, I love it, it's so insightful. Um, and here's the tip, you tailor your products and services to those trends. That doesn't mean you change your business completely, but package your products and services in a way that resonates with people. Third, you need to find big name sites that you can advertise on so that you can improve your visibility and get seen in more places. Time versus money, right? This is, this is the, the trap we're all trying to escape from, trading time for money. Um, you know, nearly, uh, nearly one in four small business owners say finding time and resources to allocate to digital marketing is their number one challenge. And it's true. Um, pile on top of that all the other hats small business owners wear, and it's not surprising, this is a top challenge for small business owners. Uh, the key to effective marketing is to keep up to date with the latest trends and developments in the industry so you don't fall behind the competition. But as a business owner, you need to focus on your business, right? And simply cannot keep up to date with all the latest marketing trends. So when I first started my company, it seemed as though I could do everything too. And this is kind of uh, very common for us entrepreneurs. We wanna take control of as many aspects of our business as possible. Um, I learned the hard way that that's actually impossible uh, to do everything alone. <laughs> um, for some reason, I have this tendency to wanna to crash into a wall first before I learn a lesson. Can anybody else relate? All right, uh, so just think about how many jobs you probably have in your business right now. Do you really want another one? I don't think so. So let me ask you another question and uh, I'm wrapping up here. When was the last time you were truly able to relax and give your loved ones your full energy instead of being constantly switched on and thinking about work all the time. Man, I'm so guilty of that. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. If you're anything like most of the small, uh, the small business owners we work with, the answer is probably not very often, right? So Steve Jobs, and I'm gonna end with this quote, uh, he's famous for saying, the secret of my success is that we have gone to exceptional lengths to hire the best people in the world, that's it. And all I'm saying to you here today is if you need help, uh, with your marketing, getting that brand presence and visibility and want to become the Kardashians in your local market. Uh, all the smiling faces from all over the world that we have on our team, we would love to help you. Um, and interestingly enough, even Kim, Kim has an expert team behind her. Did you know that she has, look at this, a personal assistant, makeup artist, nannies, hairstylists, fashion stylists, a fake tan expert. Come on, man. That's not even fair. <laughs> so anyways, um, let, me, let me jump right to the uh, conclusion here. Here's the action that you can take, okay? Go to scan.endurify.io, okay? Go there, and maybe I'll just type it here in the chat. All right, .io. And this is a really cool tool that uh, you'll be able to see your brand's visibility online. That's the starting point. Don't be this guy, be this guy, all right? Guys, thank you so much. All right, Matt, we had a, a couple of questions here that I know you were doing some there as you went, but a couple of other ones that have come across. Um, so you are, in Durham Marketing, it's like an outside agency. Yep. So how do you ensure that your efforts fit inside a company's culture, right? I think the question generates from, it always seems like there's challenges when you're doing something uh, as a fractured role or or outside the core organization of making sure that you know you're kept in the loop that you you understand the culture of what that organization is like how do you address that yeah that's a great question and frankly i would um, probably um, i would say that it you know it, it comes down to the, the the reason why you maybe have experienced challenges like that before is because the marketing agencies that you were working with they weren't wired that way to truly understand and uh, absorb your company's culture so I will say, I'm, and I'm grateful that we have people on our team that have high IQ and high EQ. So we can understand uh, emotionally what your culture is, um, your values, and really just become chameleons. So the better, the, the, and I will say that, so personality, 
Um, you know, we take a lot of personality tests and understand how we can fit into companies, and which ones will work with best. But I will say longevity is key. Chances are, if you bounce from one marketing company to another, there wasn't an intentional time period that allowed for you both to align um, on, on your values and your culture. Um, so c consistency and, and just ensuring that personality wise, there's that good fit. Cause it's true. I don't, I don't work with everybody. Um, some of them may rub me the wrong way and I may rub them the wrong way and that's okay. Uh, Matt, good answer. Another one that has come across, um, especially during a pandemic or, um, economic times that are, you know, a roller coaster when you're doing marketing, it's like getting that ball rolling is hard and then in theory it gets easier. But how, how do you maintain momentum when the economy and, and frankly in some of our cases our businesses have been roller coasters as well. How do you maintain that marketing momentum in those times? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, man, I would say you, you um, and this actually led me to start a, a program specifically for local businesses because I understood, you know, you think of the marketing funnel, the marketing funnel has changed from like, you know, those who don't know, like, and trust you to the middle of the funnel who are aware, but they're not really buying yet. And then those who buy. So in a pandemic time, you want to lean on your past and current customers and leverage them to get those referrals and repeat business and reviews. I've been preaching this all year, um, man, now is the time to double down on your current and past customers and continue to grow that relationship, reach out to them, call them. Uh, they're your lifeline right now. I don't think now is specifically the time for new customer acquisition, but it definitely is the time to focus on continuing to build that solid foundation of your current and past customers and leverage them to bring in new business. Matt, and I'm going to probably shoot you in the foot here, but um, there's been a couple of folks who've asked for recording of this Zoom. The answer is yes. Uh, we should be able to get that on an email probably tomorrow. Um, Matt, there was someone else who asked for your presentation. Um, and, and you and I can talk separately if you're willing to share that or not. Um, and then, you know, you, you mentioned there, Matt, if, of maintaining momentum in your answer there. It reminds me of another quote, Robert Frost the world is full of willing people, some of whom are willing to work and others who are willing to let them work. And I, I think that during this time, and certainly with the legends, we've wanted to, hey, we want to work. We're willing to work. We want to be helpful, um, help our clients, help our partners, and find ways to engage. Um, and I think that you know, that's what, Matt, to me, your company is all about, is helping folks find ways who want to work. If, if you're of the mindset of, well, this should be automatic and, and it doesn't involve an engagement on my end, then frankly, I don't think you're the right fit. If you're a, a business owner or executive who wants to engage with your business, um, I think what you do is a lot of, that's a lot of value. Um, Matt, you were asked for contact information. We'll put that in the email that's going out. Perfect. This is where I shoot you in the foot, Matt. Folks, if you've got a question, yeah. Don't think about price. Like if you're like, hey, man, I love this service. Maybe you can provide, but I'm sure I can't afford it. I would tell folks to engage with Matt and not let price dictate whether you have that ask the question. He'll give you an answer, and it may be something that sends you on another path. But Matt's always been great with me of answering questions and providing guidance. And then if it's a fit with working with his company, great. He's been a great resource in terms of just asking those questions. So I would encourage you to do that. Um, so folks, I, I know that far up in the chat, there was a, a link for some networking. If you want to join networking, um, perhaps one of our staff members will throw that in there real quick. There it is. So copy and paste that into your uh, your browser. This meeting is going to end. Matt, you're welcome to join the networking, but certainly don't have to. So whatever you want to do. Cool. Folks, awesome. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed your lunch. Go Legends. Go Mavs. And we'll be back in person before you know it. Thanks, everybody. See y'all.